Football is an essential part of marching band. Interacting with the players, the cheerleaders, the dance team, the mascot, but just to hear that in like full marching band sound again was really great. The first football game was so much fun. <laughs> There's a level of interaction with the marching band and the audience or the people who are there to watch the football game that just does not happen with pre-recorded music. Like our fight song, we have this whole chant section of the fight song and so when we play that, it's definitely a lot different than when you hear the band through the radio play it because you have 130 beautiful sweaty people screaming, <laughs> are you? <laughs> There's something about a college football game and having a live marching band there that I think woke up the crowd. You know, everyone loves a good drum line. Everyone loves, everyone loves Seven Nation Army. First off, there was a scary experience, especially with like the looming threat of the NCAA rules. If you play too long, you're gonna get the flag. So that's certainly like the most intimidating part, but it's easy, like once you get into a rhythm, knowing how long you can play. I think the hardest part is just having a connection with the band because for a lot of it, when we're conducting them, we're not looking at the band, we're staring at the football game. We just have to hope that they're looking at us and they cut off at the right time. Watching the game happen, hearing the crowd, hearing how they're reacting, and just feeding off all of the energy. It was the most high energy situation I've been in in a while, in a good way, and it was just, we were able to feed off all that and we eat up all the energy at those football games. The first like halftime performance at that game was so nerve wracking um, because we hadn't really performed off a of Met much before. I was worried I was gonna go like too slow or too fast because I was like nervous about it, but it, it was perfect tempo, it was good. The name of the show is Rowan Through the Years. So this year is Rowan's like centennial. So our show this year is based off of going through the decades of when Rowan has existed. Rowan Through the Years was something I just kind of came up with. A lot of music has happened in a hundred years. You know, from 1923 when the university was founded to 2023, music has had a lot of genres. And I said, why don't I do something like a decades show? So just sampling of music throughout chunks of time that the university has existed. It was really gratifying just to have people react to what you're doing. Art can exist for itself, right? Like artists can do art for themselves as much as they want and that's great, but it definitely is different when you have people who are also celebrating what you're doing and inspires community that would not have otherwise existed. That was probably one of the better runs at that point that the band have had, just feeding off the energy of the crowd. There was some stuff between us and the officials of the game that we had to just iron out on the field. Color Guard was right in the middle of the coin toss. Uh, <laughs> But you know, it's the first time doing it, so if that's the worst thing that happened in the game, which that is the worst thing that happened, I will take it. Game two was really fun. Less nerves, like I knew what was gonna happen because we had done it once before. So I knew like the order of operations basically. And we were adding a new movement, like moving to the field, which was really exciting. It was a bit of a bummer that we didn't have uniforms, but that process took like 10 hours total, so it's understandable. The night before the second game, we had spent time with, you know, drum majors and members of student leadership who we've like lovingly nicknamed the uniform crew until basically 12 a.m. fitting people for uniforms and trying to get the uniforms organized. But just, it's such a production with that sheer amount of things and people to organize with that it didn't end up happening for that game. But the game itself was still really exciting. Having game one under our belts was really helpful. And we also, we had movement two moving on the field by game two. So it's, the games are really great benchmarks for us to see how much progress we're making over the course of a short week to two weeks. 
when you have an entire new experience happening on the field, that's really gratifying for the entire ensemble. I mean, we knew before everyone was in uniforms that like, the marching band was already at a high level, and we knew that we were instantly gonna level up once we had everyone in uniforms. First of all, like the crowd reaction to the uniforms was like immediate. When we first began the parade and we were like going to the stadium, all the people like on the sidewalk, I heard at least five people mention the uniforms just in that short little walk. It just makes you feel like more official. I think everyone, the switch like flicked in their mind to like, oh, this is like real. We're like performing, performing now. Just the way it feels it's so specific that it, it kind of just like transports you into that mode immediately. Once we hit the parking lot where they were doing everything and they turned the music down and it was just us playing. Walking through that you could hear people start cheering and then we rounded the corner to get to the street where we were going to open up for the torch runners and that was where the energy was big and you know you hear people like shouting calling your name like encouraging you and then just watching as all the torch runners come by was a really cool experience. You know, there's a thing with marching bands and rain in my experience that marching bands just do really, really well when it rains. I feel like the rain just added to the energy. For a quarter or two, playing stand tunes in the rain, just you're like, I'm here, I can't care, you just gotta make the most of it, have fun. People were really having fun with it. And then, we got to the halftime show and that was just like unreal. That was like in the moment lights out the best they've ever played. It was surprisingly killer. It was so cold and wet that you just had to laugh. <laughs> I remember getting on the podium for movement two during halftime and looking around me and like going like this to start the band and my glove almost flew off because it was so soaking wet. You just have to laugh. Like this is a, the nature of the activity. It was not hard for me to keep morale up because the band also does a good job of maintaining itself. Like it's a self-providing organism. So that's been great too. I think using live music just brings a whole different type of energy to it because it's like a face-to-face interaction. Like if someone's sitting in the stands, they can just look over and see the band playing it and see like all the effort and like how much fun the band's having. It brings more like a different demographic to the games as well. I'm really looking forward to just seeing how much we can grow. It feels kind of infinite right now because this hasn't happened before here. So it's like, how far can we push ourselves? The marching man's gonna take over the world. <laughs> I see the marching man growing into this like force of good in the South Jersey community and this like facilitator of music education. This way to branch the disconnect between high school and college. That's really special and it's something that we've not necessarily had at Rowan before. <laughs>